Howdy folks, welcome to the Nature Photography Show. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to export images using Lightroom Classic. All right, so here we are in Lightroom Classic. We're gonna learn how to take one of these images and export it as something useful, whether it's for your portfolio, print, social media, whatever it is you happen to wanna to use it for, we're gonna learn how to do that today. First, notice that we're in the library module, and then over here on the left at the bottom, you'll have an export button. That'll bring up the export dialog box. You can also go to file and export. There's a few other options here, export with previous, which is whatever the last export settings that you had were, and export with a preset, and we're gonna go over presets as well once we get into the export dialog box. There's another way that you can do, which is command shift E, and that will bring up this dialog box. Or the simplest way is really to go over and hit export until you learn your quick keys. Now we are in the export dialog box. Notice up here it says export one file. You can do multiple files and we'll go over that right at the end. So first on the left hand side you'll see presets. Export two, right now we don't have any presets checked. Then we got export to hard drive and where on the hard drive desktop and we have decided this time it's going to be put into subfolder for prints. File naming, this is if you want to rename the file on export, this does not change the file name in Lightroom just on the exported file. Video, we're not doing any video today, we're just doing photos. File settings, here's where you can pick your image format. JPEG, PSD, TIFF, PNG, DNG, or your original. Uh, note that if you do the original, it will just be the NEF file, or if, if you're Nikon, depending on if you're Canon or, or whatever, but here's the JPEG that we'll use for today. Here is where you can set your quality and your color space. Most places, if you're doing prints, will do Adobe RGB 1998. Some will even do Pro Photo RGB. Most all will do sRGB, and if you're doing for the if you're exporting for the web or or something like that, the sRGB is the way to go because it most screens don't have a color gamut that will uh, take more than that. But Adobe RGB is a good a good uh, a good choice. That's what I leave it on. I don't have any issues with the web or with any prints that I make or anything like that. If I know that the print place will will do. Pro photo, I'll do that, but most of the time I just leave it like this. Here is where you can limit the file size. If your website or wherever you're trying to upload says, oh, you can't do anything over 50 megs, well, here's where you can limit that. For image resizing, resize to fit, there are a few options here. Width, dimensions, long edge, short edge, megapixels, percentage. So this is where you can have different options on how you want your image to be sized. For example, if you're doing just for the web or for social media, you could do long edge and just do 1080p, which is your standard definition. And then the resolution, this is your pixels per inch. If you're doing prints, it'll be dots per inch. For something like social media, you can leave it at 72. If you're doing prints, I would advise 300. Most print locations will give you specifications on what they want it as, but 300 usually covers it all. And then for sharpening, you've got a few options here. Screen, matte paper, glossy paper. Sometimes, most of the time, I don't I don't even know if I if I click that because here's here's the the way it is. Low is off. Standard is low, high is standard. So there's not a lot of sharpening here. I would prefer to control the sharpening myself, so I stay away from this, but maybe you'll find some use there for you. So give it a shot, see what you like. Metadata, here's where you can say all the metadata, or if you just want copyright info only, copyright and contact, whatever you happen to want right here. You can even have it write keywords as Lightroom hierarchy which if you hover over it, it tells you what it does. There you go. Now for watermarking, if you are someone that likes to watermark your images, here is where you can go into the watermark and 
You can, like this is just a copyright, Jason Eldridge. You can add your own images, your own PNG file. You can change the opacity, the offset, the radius, the angle. You can do all kinds of stuff like that with a shadow. Um, depending on what you want to do, some people are really, really adamant on watermarking their images. I'm not adamant on that, but that's always a personal choice. But here's where you can do it, and here's where you can anchor it to different places on the screen, depending on what you want to do. So there's a lot of nice options. And here's where you do the graphic, and you would pick a, a logo or whatever you happen to want to put on the image rather than just a copyright or a thing that says don't copy or steal my images, whatever. Anyway, that's where you do it in the, the watermark editor. And post-processing. This is if you want to do post-processing after the fact, which seems strange to me that you would not want to just control all of that on your own. So I never actually use this right here at all. Believe it or not, that's all there is to exporting. And we're going to take a look real fast at what I've got. I've got one image selected. It's going to go to my desktop in a folder called Four Prints. It is going to be a JPEG using this color space, the Adobe RGB, 100% quality. We're not limiting the file size. We're going to resize to fit long edge 1080p. But in this instance, because we're doing it for prints, we're actually going to just uncheck resize to fit. So it will be the original image. And for resolution, we're going to put in 300. Output sharpening, I'm not going to do any because I like the sharpening that's there. Metadata, that's fine. We can leave all of that. And we're going to hit export. Upper left hand side, you'll get a little progress window. It should be quick for one. And we're going to take a look at the desktop now. And here I have a new folder that wasn't there before called Four Prints. You look in it, and there's the image that we just exported. Now you might be asking yourself, what do I want to do if I have more than one image that I want to export? Well, that turns out to be easy. You just click it, Control or Command, I think it is, depending on the PC or Mac, and you grab a few images, and you say, okay, I want to export all of these images because they're awesome. And then you bring up the export dialog box, and now you'll say right up here, export 10 files. So it tells you it's going to default to the last setting that you had, so all of these for prints. For this one, we're going to do it for social media. So the subfolder, we'll say social. And then we're going to say on the resize, we're going to say long edge 1080p, and we're going to do resolution 72. And we're going to go down, no sharpening, and we're going to hit export. Now you'll notice in the upper left hand side, the status bar tells you export 10 files. And it's going a little faster this time because they're not as high resolution as the one I did just a moment ago. But when it's done, we're going to come out here and now we'll see a new folder called social. You look in there and there's all the images that we selected. So that is pretty handy. Now we're going to talk about the cool part, which is your presets. Presets are if you find yourself using the same settings over and over and over in Lightroom to export, you can save those as a preset so that you just click a box and it applies it to all the images that you're wanting to export and that makes it really, really handy. So let's go back into the export dialog box and we're going to look at presets over here on the left. Now I have a few set already, but we're going to do one, we'll call it test because we're really imaginative and we're going to do it right here. So we're going to do desktop, put in subfolder, test. And then we're going to say rename. No, we're not going to rename it. File settings, JPEG, yes, uh, sRGB, quality, 100%, resized fit, long edge, 1080p, resolution, 72. So this might be something that you would use for social media or something like that. But we're good with that. So what we're going to do is we're going to add to the preset. We're going to title it test. It's going to be under user presets, and we're going to create. Now you'll notice that here we have everything that we set under test. You can see I have some set up for prints and social media. So if you click prints, it will accept that and it will put it in there. Now everything is grayed out and it defaults to what you had it. So you'll see test, you'll see it's 72 resolution, 
but because it's a preset, when you export it, it will take whatever those preset settings are. So if I export it with prints, it'll override, it won't use what you see on the right that are all grayed out. But for the purpose of this, we're gonna say test. And we've already set it up what test is gonna be, and we're gonna say batch export. Now we only have one file selected, so let's cancel. We're gonna grab just a, just a handful of files. And we're gonna bring up the dialog box. We're gonna say test and we're gonna batch export. And there we go, it's exporting the nine files that we selected. And you can see here we have a new folder called test. And they'll come in uh, as, you know, the, the computer slow, there it is, all right. And you'll see them pop in as it gets done, but we don't need to see all of that. So let's go back into Lightroom Classic, and I wanna show you something that's very important. So let's say, we're going to export let's say we decide that on our test we don't really want it to go in this subfolder we want it to go into test social and we don't want it to be srgb we want it to be adobe and we don't want any type of dimensions or anything at all so we're going to just say click the resize off and we're good with a 72. so we've made some changes to our test preset we can update the test preset by right-clicking the preset and it'll say update with current settings and now this has been changed to whatever it is that we decided we wanted to shift so now that if we export them can test we can export and we talk we didn't talk about this one earlier we're going to take a look at it now show parent folder where you can see the hierarchy but you can say lowercase or uppercase on the extension so I don't know that that's useful, but there you go. You can hit export. And now when we go out here, we're going to see a new folder called test social because we updated our preset. So that is pretty handy. And for me, I have a few, just a few presets, one for prints. This is going to have as much detail as I can get at 300 DPI or pixels per inch. We're gonna have one for social media that is really low on the resolution, but I still have 3000 pixels so that it looks good on the screen. And then we have one for wire stock. I do a little wire stock uh, stuff on the sides where you, you just upload and, and people will buy images and that kind of stuff. It's, uh, it's not very profitable, just so we're clear. Anyway, I use wire stock, but at any point, if you wanna change these, like I said, right click and you can update. You can also rename the folder here, or rename the preset, whatever you want to do. So that's pretty cool. And that is as easy as it gets for being able to export your files in Lightroom. You can do one, you can do a hundred, you can do a thousand, whatever level of insanity that you want to go, you can do that in Lightroom. And that's it. And that's how you export images using Lightroom Classic. If you found anything helpful in this video, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel and as always, grab your camera, get off the couch, escape, explore, and create.